Today, you can create your own extra large reversible project from start to finish. So you can learn how to knit and practice basic knitting skills, learn new skills, and make a runner you can use. I've created this series of standalone videos so you can learn the ABCs of knitting, and especially reversible knitting. All you need is cotton yarn size 4 in any color you like, and a pair of 4.5mm knitting needles. A large eyed needle will be used to work in the ends. I'll demonstrate each step clearly and slowly, so let's get started. Since you clicked on the extra large project video, I'm assuming that you have at least a little bit of experience with knits and pearls and are looking to gain new skills. If this is you, then you're in the right place. If this project seems a bit advanced for now, make sure to check out the smaller and simpler projects in the awesome basic creations series to build up your skills first. They're linked in the description below. The cast on I've chosen for this project is a ribbed cast on which is a variation of the long tail cast on. It will match the two by two rib of the project. We'll start with a diagram of the cast on edge so you can follow along. The main pattern is a multiple of four stitches plus two to make it symmetrical. We need an extra knit stitch on each side for the crossed stitch pattern and two stitches for each self edge. So a multiple of four stitches plus eight I'm casting on three multiples of four plus eight, which is 20 stitches. We'll use this swatch to practice the stitch pattern and to determine how many stitches for the width of the runner. I like to estimate the length of the tail required by winding the yarn around the needle and adding a little bit. The first two stitches are knit, so we'll use the basic long tail cast on. Short end of the yarn toward you, needle under the yarn, Hold it with your right thumb or finger. Hold the ends in your left hand, finger and thumb between the ends, left hand turned up. Needle up under the first bar, over the second and third bar, down the finger, scoop the yarn and back out the way you came. Release the yarn on the thumb, insert the thumb back between the ends and pull to tighten. Let's do that again. Needle up under the thumb, down the finger, and back out. If you've never used a long tail cast on before, then you can continue to cast on the remaining stitches this way. If you're up for the next challenge, we'll work the next two cast on stitches purl wise. Since the purl is the reverse of the knit, the cast on is also worked in the reverse. Reach to the back, up the finger, over the next two bars, snag the third bar from the top and go back the way that you came. Now release the yarn on your finger, reinsert and pull to tighten. Let's do that again. Up the finger, down the thumb and back out. Now we'll alternate two knit cast on with two purls until we have 17 stitches cast on ending with two purls. Now add three more basic knit long tail cast on stitches to make 20. The first row sets up the stitch pattern. If the cast on row is in this direction on the diagram, then the first row is in this direction. And the stitch pattern is slip one, knit one for the self edge, purl one, then knit two, purl two, the last three stitches. For the knit stitches, I find it a bit better and easier to knit the stitch through the back loop so it's not crossed. Purl one, knit two. In the next row, we'll create the knit slip or a double stockinette selvage. The key is to make the stitch just inside the slipped selvage into a double knit stitch. For this pair of stitches, each half of the pair is knit only on one side of the fabric and slipped on the other, as you'll see in the next row. So, slip one, and now pick up the purl bump and knit into the back loop. Slip the original stitch purlwise with yarn in front. Now, knit 
the knit looking stitches and purl the purl looking stitches all the way across. Starting with a single knit and alternating two purls and two knits until there are three stitches left. Knit one. And now pull the purl bump and knit it. And slip the original stitch like before and knit the last stitch. And now we have this stitch pattern and the selve edges set up. We can knit a section using this pattern. First the three selve edge stitches, slip purlwise with yarn in front, knit one, and slip purlwise with yarn in front. Now knit the knit looking stitches and purl the purl looking stitches until the last three selve edge stitches. Knit one, slip purlwise with yarn in front, and knit the last stitch. If you're happy with this stitch pattern, then continue this way until you've knit your desired length for the swatch or project. Skip to this timestamp to finish off your swatch with a cast off that complements the cast on, self edges, and stitch pattern. If you're up for the next challenge, knit one more row like this until you have four rows below your needle. The row we just worked that's on the needle will be the basis of the crossed stitch row. The double column of knit looking stitches to each side and a double column of purl looking stitches will take its place. This is achieved by crossing each knit looking stitch over the adjacent purl looking stitch. If the knit stitch is on the left, then the left stitch is crossed in front. If the knit stitch is on the right, then the right stitch is crossed in front. Let's work the cross stitched row. Work the self edge. The first pair of stitches is a purl knit. Carefully let the stitches slide off the left needle without pulling on the fabric. Put the right purl stitch on the left needle behind the knit stitch. Pick up the left knit stitch with the right needle and slip it on to the left needle. Make sure not to change how the stitches are mounted on the needle or you'll end up with twisted stitches. Now work the knit stitch and the purl stitch. The next pair is knit purl. Let the stitches slide off the left needle. Pick up the left purl stitch with the right needle behind the knit stitch. Put the right knit stitch on the left needle and slip purl stitch on to the left needle. Now work the purl and the knit stitch. Continue working this way for the whole row, swapping the order of the knit and purl stitches, always making sure the knit stitch is in front of the work. If you find it easier, a left leaning cross, you can pick up the purl stitch in the back of the work with the right needle before you slide the two stitches off. For a right leaning cross, you can move the two stitches to the right needle first and then pick up the purl stitch on the back of the work with the left needle before you slide the two stitches off. For larger cable patterns, it can be helpful to use an extra needle to hold the stitches. You can do it here too if you like, but I find it more cumbersome than helpful with just one stitch. Work the salvage. Continue working the basic 2x2 two two rib pattern for four more rows. You will see four stitches between the crossed stitches and your needles. Make another crossed row. This five row repeat forms the stitch pattern. When you're ready to cast off, end with just three rows after the last cross row because the cast off adds a row cast off in pattern to match the cast on edge. Slip the first stitch. We'll cast off the knit slip combo together. So slip each stitch knitwise and knit them together through the back loop. With your left needle, pull the right stitch up and over the left stitch and the needle. If the next stitch is a knit looking column, knit it and then pass the first stitch over. If the next stitch is a purl looking column, then purl the next stitch and pass the first stitch over. 
Make sure to work the stitches loosely. Continue in this way until you have three stitches left on the left needle. For this runner project, I chose the 2x2 two two rib stitch as a basis, so you can practice creating reversible ribs. With the cross stitches, you can master left and right leaning cross stitches, which are a great introduction to future cable work. The rib cast on and casting off in pattern match the basic stitch pattern. And the thicker selve edges are a great choice for a runner as it makes a structured edge that doesn't bend as the stitch pattern changes from adjacent knit looking stitches to adjacent purl looking stitches between the crosses. Slip the double stitches knitwise and knit them through the back loop. Now move them back to the and slip the last stitch over back to the right needle and slip the right stitch over the left stitch. This is to make a nice corner. To make a larger runner, you can use this swatch to determine how many stitches you need. If you have a specific sized surface in mind, then I suggest blocking your swatch to get more accurate measurements. If your runner is going in the middle of a bigger surface and the exact dimensions are not critical, then you can use the swatch as is. It's the way I do the math. If you have a way that works for you, then of course that's fine too. Stitches on the top, length on the bottom, swatch on the left, and project on the right. Swatch. 16 stitches is about 8 centimeters. I prefer to use a whole number of stitches on the swatch and then measure rather than estimate how many parts of the stitches are in 10 centimeters exactly. Based on my plan, my project will be about 30 centimeters wide. So multiplying both sides by 30, so all the numbers are on one side, is 60 stitches for the project, not including the salvage. Now that you've made a swatch, you can repeat the same process for a bigger runner. If you're up for a bit of extra challenge, you can plan out the crossed stitches at different intervals. For example, for this runner, the crossed stitches are in the Fibonacci sequence. And based on the swatch measurements, I cast on the number of stitches I needed to make the block dimensions the golden ratio. Now, I just have to find a good spot for a hot pink runner. If you've enjoyed knitting your awesome basic creation with me, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel to find more videos on reversible stitch patterns and projects, including the other videos in this five part series. Each video showcases projects of various sizes and provides full instructions for a different cast on, stitch pattern, special stitch combination, salvage and cast off that all work together to make a beautiful reversible project. Feel free to leave a comment if you have questions or ideas for more awesome reversible knitting. And remember, knitting is a great way to expand your mental skills and keep your mind sharp.